What's up everybody? In this video I'm going to address one of the characteristic components of Gentoo, namely use flags, uh, what they are, what they do, how to use them, and maybe some brief best practices discussion involving them. This will uh, probably actually be a two-part series since I feel like I have a sizable amount of information that I want to go over and I don't want to make this video too long but I also don't want to leave anything out so I figure doing more than one video will probably be the right thing to do. Uh, but hopefully after this, you should learn a thing or two about use flags and managing your Gentoo system. If you're relatively new to Gentoo, this video will hopefully give you a good amount of information and help you avoid some common costly mistakes uh, associated with use flags. So uh, let's get to it. To start with, what are use flags? The Gentoo Wiki Handbook describes use flags as keywords that embody support and dependency information for a certain concept. To put it a little more plainly, a use flag is an option that you can set to have packages that you install through Portage be compiled with certain optional features. Use flags are usually used by multiple different packages to enable support for common features. As an example, let's consider the KDE use flag, which represents support for the KDE desktop and its various associated utilities. If I were to enable the KDE use flag, then all the programs that I download and install through Emerge that have optional support for KDE would be compiled in such a way as to enable that support. Conversely, if I were to disable the KDE use flag for whatever reason, then any packages that I emerge that have optional support for KDE will be built to have that support disabled. Uh, and this way, use flags are a tool to fine-tune the customization of your system. They allow you to install only the parts of programs that you need or want, which helps reduce disk bloat, decrease compile times, and improve performance across the board. They also offer a universal way to enable optional features that might usually not be included in binary releases of programs. All in all, use flags are a core tool for achieving Gentoo's goal of maximum personalization and customizability of your system. Most of the use flags that you have enabled by default are likely enabled through your profile. A profile is a predefined default configuration for Portage. Each profile will set a series of default use flags. Uh, you should have chosen a profile uh, to use as part of your installing Gentoo back when you did that. Um, you can check what profile Portage is using by invoking eselect profile show. And as you can see here, it says current Etsy Portage make profile symlink is default Linux AMD 64 17.0. That means that I'm using the default Linux AMD 64 and 17.0 profiles. Each one of those profiles has a list of different use flags that it considers to be part of that profile. Uh, default has a certain list, Linux has a certain list, AMD 64 has a certain list, and 17.0 has a certain list. Each one of those combines together to make your whole profile which will have its own set of total default use flags that are enabled. As a general rule, Portage profiles tend to be pretty minimalist in terms of what use flags they enable by default. This is because it's better to let the user themselves choose which flags they want in a more fine-grained way rather than just using a pre-made collection of use flags as determined by a more broad approach like a profile. Outside of your profile, the other main way you have to enable use flags globally is through your Etsy Portage make.conf file. You're probably familiar with this file from when you installed Gentoo. This is the file that you use to set lots of different variables as they would be used by Portage. Let's take a quick look at my make.conf profile. Okay, inside your typical make.conf profile, you can add a field. Let's go down to a field called use all in caps, followed by an equal sign, followed by a list of space delimited use flags inside double quotes. These flags will be added to the global list of use flags defined by your profile and thus will be enabled at compile time whenever you emerge a package. This is what I meant by fine grain control earlier. By setting individual use flags in make.conf, you gain exceptional powers to customize your system 
for your exact hardware and tastes. This is usually a better approach for enabling specific global use flags for your system. Using the use field of your make.conf file is usually a much better approach to enabling specific use flags globally on your system. As you can see, some of the flags in this list I have defined have a dash in front of them. This is a way to specifically disable use flags that might be enabled elsewhere. As you can see, I have the system D use flag manually disabled with a dash. So even if that particular use flag were to get enabled somewhere else, such as as a hard dependency for some package, this setting would override it and disable it. This manual disabling should only be used for use flags that you are 100% certain you do not need, since it will override any enabling that might be done of that particular use flag. Speaking of use flag dependencies, I should mention that Gen2 packages divide use flags into two categories, required use flags and optional use flags. Optional use flags are exactly what they sound like, optional. You can enable them if you like, but you don't have to. Required use flags, on the other hand, must be set in order for a package to be installed. Usually this is because some programs depend on optional features of other programs. For instance, if I try to emerge with the dash P option for pretend, the CUPS printer server, you can see that emerge alerts me that I will have to make use changes in order to proceed. Specifically, I will have to enable the CUPS use flag for the apptext ghost script package. CUPS is an optional use flag for ghost script. But the CUPS program itself depends on GhostScript having the CUPS use flag enabled. Thus, you must enable the CUPS use flag for GhostScript in order to be able to install the CUPS server itself. Whenever one of these required changes comes up, Emerge will alert you. So just pay attention to the output of the Emerge command and make use changes as necessary if you have to install a program that has special dependencies like this. To close out this video, I just want to demonstrate a few awesome tools Gentoo has that can help you manage your global use flags. The first is emerge-info, with no package name specified. If we run that, we get a bunch of info about your portage install and environment, among which is the use flags that you have enabled. Now this output is obviously pretty verbose, uh, we can trim it down a bit by running emerge dash dash info and pipe it to grip and we will grip for at the beginning of a line the word use followed by an equal sign and that will print out just the line that contains the use flag setting now this is going to show a lot more information than just what's in your use variable um, it's also going to show things like targets for specific languages, that is, which versions of specific languages you're telling programs to compile for. Uh, it shows several other things here, too, that are only sort of tangentially related to use flags at compile time. If we want to trim this output down even further to get just the use flags, we can do something like emerge dash dash info pipe once again to grip for use equals at the beginning of the line and then pipe that to cut with the dash D option to specify the double quote as a delimiter and dash F2 to get the second field. And if we run that, we'll get just the flags that are inside the quotes of the use variable. So if you want to just see what global use flags you have enabled, this would be the way to do it. Now what this specific output is, is it's actually a combination of the use flags that are enabled by your profile and the use flags that are enabled in your make.conf file. So this can be said to be all of your global use flags. Another great tool to use here is Portage Q, the Portage Query tool. To get the info about use flags that this tool can give you, enter Portage Q, E-N-B-V-A-R for environment variable, and then in all caps, use for the use variable. And then we can pipe that to xargs dash n one. And then this is going to produce a long list of outputs. So let's pipe that to less. And then we can enter that. And as you can see, we get a huge list of environment variables. Now, what this is displaying is all the enabled use flags on your system, including those that exist only for single target packages. Uh, to explain what that means, some packages have optional features 
that do not correspond to any of the nebulous concepts that Gentoo considers use flags to represent. These optional features are usually tied to some sort of functionality that is unique for a particular program, but that is not required in order to use it normally. In these cases, sometimes a package will define a use flag that only exists for that particular package so that users can compile with or without the optional functionality in the regular old Gentoo way. What this portage queue command does is show all enabled use flags, those enabled by your profile, those enabled in make.conf, and those one-off flags enabled for specific packages. Uh, as such, the output is much, much larger, but this is technically a much more detailed and complete view of your use flag system-wide. A final program that I would like to show you is UFED. I don't personally use this program very much, but if you prefer a more graphical menu-based interface to manage your use flags, UFED is pretty good. Run it with just the UFED command. And this is what the interface looks like. You can browse use flags and see which ones are disabled here that don't have the star in them or enabled here that do have the plus sign in them. Escape and enter closes out of UFED. And you can also make use changes with UFED, but you'll have to run it with root privileges. So you would have to do sudo UFED to gain root privileges and run it so that you can make changes to your system by changing the use variables that you have enabled. And now you can enable use flags by highlighting them and pressing the space button to enable or disable. Uh, UFED is a pretty cool program. Like I said, I don't use it much myself, but sometimes a graphical interface is nice for this sort of thing. Uh, one thing to note is that unlike the previous two programs I showed, UFED is not installed by default on Gen 2. In order to get it, let's get out of here, you'll have to merge app portage UFED. And that will download and install it on your system. Um, UFED is very small and lightweight, so it's a good choice for graphical use flag management all around if that's what you're interested in. So check it out if you get a chance. And that about does it for this first video on use flag management. Uh, like I said, this will probably be the first of a two-part video series. In the next one, I would like to talk about enabling and disabling use flags on a package-by-package -package basis. There are a couple of ways to go about doing that, and I'm going to talk about that in the next video on this subject. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time.